Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of our 787 tutorial for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Descent, and uh, just a few moments ago, uh, we just got a warning here that says uh, we have an FMC message. And we float down here, and you can see it's telling me to reset my MCP altitude, which is what I intend to do. So to set my MCP altitude, what I'm going to try to do is discover what my bottom altitude is. And if you take a look here, 2,400 feet at splat is pretty darn low. Runway 33 is 187 feet, and graph is 1,500. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down to 1,500 feet. Now, the interesting thing here is as you're cranking this down to 1,500 feet, you'll probably observe it's like, hey, it doesn't let me go down between 2,000 and 1,500. Uh, the reason for that is we have this little auto mode, and I can switch it off of auto mode to basically dial it into that. Now, one of the cool things with this particular aircraft is you'll notice that on our navigational display, we have this little TD on top of descent. And what's going to happen is when we cross that component, if we have told the MCP that we're okay with going to a lower altitude, the aircraft is going to attempt to get us down to that altitude. As a matter of fact, if you listen carefully, you can hear all of my engines spooling down simultaneously. You can see also, oh, I'm getting a little light in my seat. Whoa, 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 floating. I'm floating. I'm floating. No, just kidding. But uh, what is going to start happening is we're going to start descending rather ferociously, depending on how close you are to your target. Now, if I look over here, our display has changed itself a little bit to represent some of this new information. First of all, you'll notice this little magenta triangle thing here. And what this is trying to do is tell us how close we are to the correct rate of descent. And one of the things you'll notice is, is we went firing past that at high speed, that it actually has to adjust itself. Another thing you probably hear is my engines are going to start spooling up a tiny bit to basically attempt to maintain my selected speed as well as my correct vertical navigation path. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be landing at a BWI. If you watch the first part of this, you have a pretty good idea of everything that's kind of gone on so far. And now it's really just a matter of getting ready to put this thing on the ground. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up my checklist page, bring this one up real quick, press the normal checklist. This is before takeoff, normal menu. And of course, we're going to select our descent checklist. So it's going to ask us to do four things. First thing it will do is ask us to check recall. I clicked on it. Nothing bad happened. Checked. It's going to ask us to set the auto brake. Uh, it's a pretty short runway today, so we're going to be using auto brake position three. Check. Landing data, it's going to ask us to go ahead and compute that now. This is a good time to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to my CDU on this side. I'm going to go ahead and open my index. I'm going to go ahead and press my approach, and I'm going to select some of my options here. So for me, I'm going to do a full approach here, so 145. One of the things we always like to do is we like to add a little bit of wind correction here, about five knots. So what I'm going to do is dial in 150, 5 plus 145, slash, and we're just going to go ahead and, I'm sorry, uh, my apologies, 30 degrees of flaps, slash 150 is going to be our selected now, if I push this, you'll see that it does that automatically. One of the things you also notice is as this little wind correction factor here. So one of the things that's trying to do is basically double count for it. So if we go like that, we can select that plus the wind correction factor of five knots. So that gives us that 150. You can also set this to zero and do it the way I did just a few moments ago. It's kind of up to you what method that you want to do it. So last thing we want to do is it says something about minimums here. So we're going to go ahead and get our minimums. We have our ref, uh, which is important, but we do want to set minimums. Our uh, minimums on this one are relatively straightforward. Uh, we have a little knob for it up here. You can reset that by pushing this button. And if you do the little knob here, you'll notice that we have this thing that says barrow down here at the bottom. I do want barometric minimums. I'm going to do radio. So I'm going to go click this over to radio here. Use the little knob. Whoa, that's going to happen to you about a thousand times. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. And I'm going to go set the radio altitude to be about 200. Oh my god. Goodness, flight sim, you didn't think that throw. Oh boy, oh, too much. Easy, I'm at 167. You can see the number right here where my little finger is. Easy, easy, breezy, beautiful, easy. Not so much. I wish there was a digital entry. There is a digital entry, but why did I do it this way? Done, perfect. So you can see your radio is now set to 200. So our minimums are set and we've selected our reference speed check. Approach briefing. Ahem, ahem. Um, no, just uh, kidding. Uh, we're going to be landing runway 33 left today. We're going to be using the ILS for the purposes of doing so. Uh, we are barometric pressure. We're going to get all that stuff squared away. Uh, we're going to be approaching right outside of uh, basically over Delaware. We're going to go straight in from that particular position. Uh, during the approach, we're going to be using a full flaps today, 30 degrees. Our approach speed is going to be 145 plus 5 knots for wind correction. We expect the wind to be slightly to our left. We're going to land with a cross uh, basically a little bit of left aileron after we set it on the ground. After landing, we're going to be taking a left to get on to the main area where the tarmac is and then proceeding from there. And again, there'd be a whole speech there, but this is just the world's laziest uh, takeoff briefing. Looks good to me. And now what we're going to do is select approach. And the last thing it wants to do is confirm that our altimeters are set correctly. 
Now on our way down, uh, we're gonna go and get some data for BWI here so uh, we can do this somewhat properly today. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up some information about KBWI here. And it's a very, very large airport, but this is a great opportunity to kind of review some kind of classic stuff here. So bring it up on AirNav real fast to scroll down here. Uh, we can see all sorts of beautiful stuff here. I love how they all have different DP frequencies now. That's fabulous. But uh, the thing that we want to do here is uh, we have ASOS. Uh, of course, we have ground. Uh, we want to get a little more information than that, though. Here we go. And you can see all the different ASOS frequencies and stuff like that. I like that pretty good there. I like this new Anthem Star. I like that's really cool. Again, I've never flown into BWI in the real world, uh, other than in like a major airliner or something along those lines. So it is pretty cool. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So that's uh, all the information we need to get. Let's go ahead and dial that in. One, two, three, nine, two, five. All right, let's do it. Come down here. One, two, three, nine, two, five. Fantastic. Oh, we can go swap that over there like that. It's going to yell at me for an invalid entry. That means I click the button like six times. That was something I do all the time. Open the sucker up. Uh, let's see here. Observe wind clear. What? Oh, beautiful. Oh, sweet. That is fantastic. So yeah, we don't have to worry about that today. That's awesome. That makes my life easier if you ask me. Cool. So that's all set to go. Uh, we've gone ahead and confirmed that. Altimeters will set once we get under 18,000 feet. I'm just going to press the B key in the keyboard, and that's kind of the quickest and easiest way to do that and kind of get on our way as far as those things goes. Now we get a lovely view of uh, Delaware. I got some all sorts of funny things to talk about Delaware. The super ver short version is that um, if you like chickens, Delaware is the place for you. Uh, they also have very interesting tax codes to encourage people to live in the state rather than vacation in the state. And you have a lot of these kind of neighborhoods in uh, Delaware, which is just, I don't know, it's just a fascinating place. I had family that lived there for a while, so we'd always fly, you know, the Cessna 182 in and out of these like little rinky dink airports where they have like random B-17s just chilling around, which again, I think that stuff's kind of fun, but it is what it is. So we're now under 18,000 feet, so I'm going to press the B key. We're going to get the local altimeter pressure here. You can see that has affected my VNAB substantially. You know, the reason it did that, of course, is the fact that... Um, it was expecting one pressure, got a totally different one. Now we're at 800 feet high, but it's okay. The airplane does a really, I'm not gonna lie, kind of aggressive job of, of correcting any of the boo-boos that we said a little bit earlier there. So that's nice and balanced. Uh, that's coming down quite nicely. 16,000 feet, we'll get you at 10,000. All right, we're just about crossing 10,000. Now oh, I got 10,500 here. We're crossing truth. <laughs> Love that. A couple things we want to do at 10. We're going to go ahead and get our landing lights on let everybody know. You can actually hit these two if you want. Go right across there, and uh, you're going to get a little warning sound. That's to let everybody in the back know that we're about to get landing. So landing this thing is pretty easy. It's got a couple little things you got to kind of play with, but uh, one thing I do like to do is uh, turn on my terrain view here just to make it a little bit easier to see if there's anything nasty. And I'm looking carefully. You can actually see a diagram of an airplane as goofy as that is. So I'm going to zoom out just a bit here and uh, you can see there's no terrain because again, we're pretty, we're still at 10,000 feet. And let's be honest, folks, this is the flat part of the state. <laughs> this is basically the ocean side of things to make it pretty easy. So we're landing lights all good to go. Uh, we're going to get ready for approach. I've already set my altimeters. Approach is complete, normal. So the last thing we need to do is do a landing. And these are going to be our three pieces that we need to get ready for landing here. You'll notice that uh, there's not a lot going on as far as that goes because of like I said, keep it relatively simple. Hop over to legs page. My ND shows us uh, sneaking up on Snuggy. <laughs> is that like the Snuggy or is that Snoogie? I'm sure the guy's name is Snoogie and not Snuggy, but I'm sorry, you're named after a blanket shirt. So that's always kind of fun. So we get you right at Jan's. It's looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to get an FMC warning here. Unable to maintain VNAV. Extend speed brakes is required. Don't panic about that because I'm about to press the APP button. So now we have approach hold R and this aircraft is ready to get dirty. So what I'm going to do is give us a couple clicks of flaps. So we have plenty of speed here to make it a little bit easier. You can hear all sorts of noisy things. You'll notice my extension speed for my gear is 270 knots, which is incredible because that means we can basically get those gear down anytime. I love landing gear because they're very, very loud and they help slow you down. All right, speed break. We're going to arm that by pulling up like this. You just kind of give it a little tug. It's kind of irritating. It's going to honk at you if you're not using it correctly. That looks good to me. Go ahead and get a couple more clicks of flaps in. So that's set. Landing gear needs to come down. Let's take a look out the window here. I can see my airport's going to be right here on my right. That looks pretty good. We're kind of far out for landing gear, if you ask me. Uh, one thing you have to be very mindful of is in the real world, or depending if you're in virtual ATC or something, they're probably going to be giving you a lot of speed instructions right now. So just kind of be mindful of that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the plane a little bit dirtier here. Go ahead and pop the next click of uh, ear flaps down. We're going to get the gear down in just a few moments. It's just gonna, you start getting the bounties. I, I love this part of the flight here. 
17 degrees of flap. So I named the last plane you can think of that has a set flap 17. <laughs> it's very sp at least specific is uh, kind of what I would like to say. So we're going to have a couple different things happening at once here. Uh, for one, of course, we need to get down to our 150 knots, our reference speed. We need to get our landing gear down. Uh, we're going to pop the next click of flaps. Flaps 18, everyone. Flaps 20. There we go. Let's get this plane nice and dirty. Very good. And you can see, you see how we've got kind of like a nose down attitude. That means we're a bit on the fast side for that flap setting, but that's okay. Our vertical speed is good. Radar altimeter is good. Every good time to go ahead and check everything else. It's looking for landing gear, down. Look at the size of these things. They're so beefy. Nice. Delightful. So now when I come down here, you'll see my speed brake is on, my landing gear is ready, and my flaps, it's still yelling at me about flaps because if you recall, we selected full flaps for our particular landing gear. Now a pro would not go dump their flaps just yet. And the reason they're not gonna put their flaps down the rest of the way is we just create a ton of drag and drag equals money because money is obviously fuel. So we have to keep that in mind, but this is a flight sim and it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my flaps down the rest of the way. You can see they're gonna be marked there. There we go. And that's a 30, it's gonna change color as soon as it's selected properly. Ding. You can see that selected properly. Swinging over here, of course, you can see that. Remember how we did that uh, five knot wind correction? You'll see that it's actually built into our speed here. So our reference speed is 145 plus five for our actual selected speed. Now, the incredible thing is I haven't had to touch anything yet except the buttons, which is a, uh, I don't know, this something feels kind of wrong about that. This aircraft is perfectly capable of doing full auto land, which is what we're going to do. Isn't that awesome? So this guy who just appeared on our heads up display, of course, is our radar altimeter, which means we can look out the window rather than where we're going. One thing I love is you get this nice little diamond display here. This is actually the glide slope right here. So you have a pretty good idea of what it's doing. And you can see we're just a little bit under glide slope at this particular point. Uh, what we could do, of course, if we're a little worried about this is we could actually hit the hold altitude, but you can see the glide slope, we're catching up to it pretty effectively here. And again, something you have to kind of keep an eye on whenever you're dealing with any form of automation is you've always got to go back and idiot check it to make sure it's not being goofy for you. All right, taking a look here. Let's do our checks. Looks good, normal menu. I think after this, it's just shut down. That is going to be our last thing to do. Uh, something that some crews will do at this point is they'll actually kick on their APU to basically get that thing kind of warmed up a little bit before they get on the ground. And the reason they'll do that, of course, is when they shift from basically ship power and kill our two engines to APU power, it's, it's already pretty much there. Ah, there's the turbulence I remember so much at altitudes like this. All right, let's do everything. Gas undercarriage, mixture of flaps, light speed, uh, recall. You can always hit that button real quick to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Nothing came up. We're starting to get terrain, which does not surprise me. You can see quite a bit of it starting to appear on our screen there. No surprise. Uh, we can actually zoom out a little bit and probably get a little bit more terrain. Yeah, you can see kind of the mountains of uh, Maryland, so to speak, and they're just kind of chilling. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's all we got in Maryland. All right, give it a break. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So we can either do this as an auto landing or we can do this as a manual landing. It is up to you, the pilots. If you're going to auto land it, remember that you need an ILS. You need basically a level three in order to do that correctly. Now I'm noticing something very interesting here. You'll notice we have not captured the glide slope until just now. Now the reason we captured that glide slope is remember we set that 1500 foot cutoff. If we hadn't set that, we would have kept descending on VNAV and not on ILS. Imagine how dangerous that could have been. One of the things you want to do, by the way, once you get Glide Soap selected, is you want to run over here real quick and you want to make sure you select whatever your altitude for going around is and basically be ready for that. Because if you have to go mist, you don't want to be fiddling with things. You want to just be able to push the button and be on your way. Now, shutting off the autopilot, of course, is you have to be very cautious and careful about that. It's going to scream at you. You definitely want a button on your joystick to do that. So I'll keep in mind there are two things you have to shut off, the auto throttle and the autopilot, unless you're going to let it touch the ground on its own. You can see right now we're right on glide slope. You got that on the right, right on the localizer. There's that crosswind from the left that I promised you a little bit earlier. It's not a very strong wind, trust me on that one. And if I zoom in a little bit, uh, it's looking pretty good. Our flight director is doing an okay job. I got my hand on the controls. Remember, 200 feet is our decision altitude today. The little 500. Man, that is some crisp graphics there. I like that. It's going to say 500. Oh, I love this part. So right there on the right is the rental. <laughs> 400. Got my hands. I'm ready to go around at a moment's notice. One last check. One last check. 200. 250. So 
what we're gonna do is Nice, we're here. Nose down, pull reverse. I like how it gives you a little display on the side as to uh, which one of the braking settings. That was a little harder than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. And I'm not actually hitting the brakes right now, so just reverse. Isn't that awesome that it shows you how much braking you're hitting with? And it was a right turn after landing, not a left turn. Fantastic. Everything is here. We are all set to go. Everything's been reset. We're going to snap off the auto throttle just for safety. Ooh, that was a stiff land. That's probably one of my worst ones in a while. We're here. <laughs> the passengers are going, oh, a chiropractor. I'm going to sue the airline. Interestingly enough, my weather radar or my terrain radar is not picking up any of the terminals that we just want powering through. So the last thing we need to do, of course, as we're kind of settling in here is get our APU fired up. Again, the advantage to that is when we do kill our engines, everything's already going to be basically waiting for us and ready to go for a quick turnaround. This looks like a perfectly good place. Hey, there's a Cinnabon here. I'm going to go run in there real fast and get one of those. I think I have a couple minutes before we need to go. Uh, uh, easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. Woo. Go ahead and snap on the parking brake. Uh, pretty easy as far as shutdown goes. Uh, you'll notice we have a couple different things here. So uh, we want to make sure like that weather radar is off. Uh, we've already shut that on. We do want to shut the terrain radar off, though. One thing we will do, of course, is reach up above our heads. And, of course, we have our two engines. Shutting these things on are snap. Um, of course, you can see there's nothing up here for that. You can starve it of fuel. The easiest thing, just hit the two fuel controls. And uh, when you do that, you're going to get an engine shutdown warning. Everything is going to start slowly spooling down. And as you can see, of course, I forgot to put the flaps and spoilers up. What a nerd. Enjoy.